right. So hopefully everything's cool. All right. Hey guys. Let me come back and chat with you again for just a second. I wanted to make sure that my second camera view was going to work, but thank you so thank you guys so much for joining me today. Sorry for the glitchiness. That stuff happens. Um, so my demo today, our Josephine knot bracelet. This was, of course, one that we did recently. Came out with our um, with our Wild West launch, which was at the beginning of February. And that included these wonderful little um, concho crimp ends um, were part of the um, launch. You've seen our crimp ends. Hopefully, if you're fans of TRCast and if you watch our demos and are familiar with our product line at all, you know that we have some of these crimp ends. Um, they are wonderful um, finishing components for uh, seed bead um, designs and materials that have some thickness, and including like leather cord. So I was really inspired with the Wild West launch to work with these new ones with um, some leather cord and some knotting. So um, this is what came out of that. And I have to say, I wonder if um, Michelle from Leather Cord USA is watching because I did I did let her know I was doing this demo. My original inspiration was one was a bracelet that she gave me. Um, she had put this together. Leather Cord USA s sells, of course, leather products. And um, I had given her some of these little Jardine barrel beads and she put together this bracelet with some 1.5 millimeter round cord and gave it back to me. And I said, oh, I'm going to use that someday. So that was the initial inspiration for this design. And I added um, some embellishment with some of our new little flower nugget beads and some size six seed beads. So. Um, I love the way it came out, and I hope you guys are going to like the demo. I'm going to switch my camera again. Um, hopefully it'll work. No problems. All right, here we are. Um, so this project, um, I don't know if everybody's familiar with nodding. It can feel a little bit intimidating because it can be it can be complicated, but once you get the hang of it, um, it's pretty, it's pretty, I like it. It's meditative. Um, you know, if you don't get frustrated, it can be very meditative. So the project on the website, um, which is it, the link to the, U, um, the URL to this project is in the description of the video um downloadable on our website i put lots of figure images in this design so uh, I, in the downloadable sheet so hopefully if you guys decide to download this and do it um, all of those little figure images will be helpful um i know they were for me when i was trying to recreate it so um i'm gonna get that out of the way what we need to make this project is of course the um the crimp ends we need some of our six by two millimeter barrel beads um these are our distressed six by two millimeter barrel beads we need a little clasp and I, I, like, I chose this tiny little, I think we call it our half inch Annas. It's, a, it's one of our smaller ones. And I really wanted a small class because I, I wanted the crimp ends to kind of get all the focus. So I chose a very small toggle clasp. We need some four of our little flower nugget spacers and a few size six seed beads. Um, you do want to make sure that whatever seed beads you choose will have holes that will fit on the 1.5 millimeter cord. So, you know, there can be some variation when you're working with seed beads. So, and then you also need um, 1.5 millimeter cord. Now, I had kind of pulled out a few colors to see what I might want to work with. Hi, Michelle. Michelle is here. Yay. Um, so hopefully she can pop in. If you guys have questions about leather and working with it, Michelle's your girl. If you have questions, pop them into the comments and maybe she'll have a chance to answer them. Um, I am using 1.5. Um, I thought it might be fun to work with a different color. So I think I'm going to go with this one, this darker one. Um, I'm going to cut four 20 inch pieces. Um, I happen to have a loose one here. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, use that one. And then cut a few more. Same length. And 
and I'm just gonna pull off of the spool and cut them that way rather than measuring them because that'll be close enough. The 20 inches is, you know, gonna be plenty for what we're doing. Um, and it doesn't have to be exact. So it's not like I need to measure exactly 20 inches here. I do, I do just wanna make sure that I'm giving myself enough. And as usual, I will try and keep my eyes on the comments. Any questions, um, you know, put them there and hopefully I will catch them. So that's my four pieces, about 20 inches. Uh, about 20 inches long. I'm just going to line them all up and I'm going to tie them in a knot at one end. Oh, first I'm going to kind of stretch them a little bit. I'm going to pre-stretch. Just pull on them some. <clears throat> and I have found that working with leather cord, it's a good idea to do this because the leather cord can stretch out with wear a little bit. So I'd rather have that happen before I make my design rather than after, so that hopefully will only minimally impact the size later. So a little habit I try to, or a little technique I try to remember to do before I work with the leather. So I'm tying my four strands just into an overhand knot, just like this. And then I'm gonna move all this stuff over a little bit. So it's out of our way. I'm gonna be working with the, the toggle, of course, and the, I have a few, a few jump rings here for that as well. And the crimp ends last, so I'm just gonna tuck those up out of the way. <clears throat> and then what I have here is just another little work mat and I'm going to clip the knot up here at the top of the work mat and just that what's going to hold all of my strands so that um, <clears throat> so that they'll stay in place while I'm working on it and I'm gonna check my the rest of my stuff here guys and see how we're doing seeing if things are streaming right yeah i just don't know hopefully i'm here and you guys can see me and all is good i'm not seeing any comments so i it's hard to tell if uh, everything is going properly all right so i got my four strands tied them in my overhand knot I'm gonna separate those into two right and two left. <coughs> and then um, you'll see here that I added bead embellishment along the knots in the main part of the bracelet, but I did not add bead embellishments here at the first. Oh, great, thank you, Susan. Susan popping in and saying she's hearing and seeing me, yay. All right, so there's no bead embellishments in this first one, cause that's the one that I'm gonna, um, that I'm gonna attached to the crimp end here. So I don't want any bead embellishment there. So I'm just gonna start with the knotting. So I'm gonna take the two left cords and I'm just gonna make a little, a little loop like this. I'm gonna loop them over and put the tail, oops, hold on. That tail needs to be underneath. So I'm gonna loop the cords and the tail needs to be underneath the loop. Can you see that? <clears throat> so the, the first part is up and then the looped around to the left and went under. And then I'm gonna take the right hand cords and I'm gonna make, I'm gonna, let's move this up a little bit. I'm going to bring those tails over here and underneath the tail of the first the loop on the left side you know i with the knots i made i mean with the diagrams i made i really had worked out the words and the and the okay do this and do that and go here and go there really worked it out well so those diagrams will help you um my words now and my demonstration might be a little clunky Anyway, I'm bringing this, the ones on the right, I'm going to bring them down over that original loop and I'm going to go over to the left and tuck them under this, this tail. And then I'm going to bring that around and I'm going to go over, over the upper part of the left hand. 
under the loop of the left hand. When I say left hand, I mean the ones on the left hand. And then I'm going to go, remember that this right hand cord needs to be kind of sitting over this loop. And then I go over that and under the far side of the loop. And then if, if I did everything right, I should be able to pull all of these up and get my first Josephine knot in place. I do want to, before I tighten everything, I'm gonna come around with to my, um, and straighten and kind of make sure all my low overlaps are eliminated so that the, so that the cords are aligned with each other. Does that make sense? I don't want overlaps and twists in the cord. I want them to all be nice and tidy. And then I'm just going to work. I found that the best way to, to adjust the knot is to pull on the cords as they crisscross right here. And then I can kind of adjust everything else. And I'm moving that up to the top. It doesn't have to be all the way up there. Um, later in the process, we'll be trimming these ends off. But I just want to get my knot kind of up towards the top of the board and kind of tidy all of these up. And get my knot nice, nice and tidy. And I want it to be fairly um, snug. I don't want there to be a lot of looseness. Um, let me show you, show you what I mean. I got a couple. This is a um, design that I've been wearing. Um, so I tried to make sure that the knots were quite tight here. This was a demo that I was doing earlier in the process. And you can see that the knots are just bigger because I, I didn't tighten everything up quite as much. Um, I do want to tighten them up as much as I can because if they're loose like this, then they'll, eventually they sort of self-tighten as you wear and the whole bracelet will get a little bit longer if you let it do that. So I'm starting with um, knots that are kind of as tight as, um, as I can. So um, got my first knot. The next thing I want to do, and remember this one doesn't have bead embellishment up here, but it does have one here. So I'm gonna add one of my little green beads, green seed beads to the inside cord of the right hand pair. And I need to trim this at an angle so it's easier to thread through the seed beads. That's a snug one. Let's try another one. Okay, now this is hilarious because I've been making these braces like crazy and it's all been fitting just fine, right? This is a 1.5 millimeter strand and not, I didn't accidentally work a two millimeter in there, did I? But you know, there can be variation with, um, with leather cord diameter. You know, you buy a, a roll of two millimeter and then uh, you buy a, a different roll of two millimeter and there can be some variation in the thickness just because it's an organic product. So let's trim it a little more till I can get that tip through there and then I can pull it up on there. So I'm moving that uh, knot all the way up here. And then I'm gonna take all four of the cords and thread on one of those barrel beads. And actually, I do want to be quite careful here. I want them to be aligned and flat when I thread them through. Don't be tempted to, if you start with your cords all the same length, um, that is best. Don't be tempted to trim them when you get unevenness because the the they'll just keep moving the the ends of the cords will kind of keep moving with the knots, if, if that makes sense. So you don't want to be sabotaging yourself and trimming them and then ending up with not enough cord when you get to the end. 
So I've got that first little bead on. I got my first barrel bead on. I'm tucking them all up, making sure that my knots are my knot is still in good shape and is nice and tidy. And then I'm going to take the inside cord of the left hand pair and I'm going to thread on one of the red beads. And now I'm going to start my second um, my second Josephine knot. Um, where the distance between the knots is something you can kind of adjust as you're making this bracelet. Um, the bracelet has a total of one, two, three, four, five, six knots. Um, it is with the little with the little clasp. It is about an eight inch bracelet. So the distance between the knots, that's kind of where I have a little bit of wiggle room. I can make sure they're all tucked up a little bit tighter if I want my bracelet to be a little bit shorter, or I can leave a little more room between the knots if I want my bracelet to be a little bit longer. So um, that's just something to keep in mind as you're, as you're working with the, with the knotting. So I'm going to tuck everything up kind of close. Eight inches is kind of a big bracelet. The one I made for me, I think I, I made everything. Oh, and look, I used a bigger toggle on that one too. But I tucked everything up a little tighter, and it's, it's still almost eight inches, but it's a little bit smaller. And it fits me better than this one does. My, my wrist is quite small. All right, so second knot. Now, um, another interesting little thing. In Michelle's bracelet, her original one, she made all of her, she started all of her knots on the same side, so they're all exactly the same, which means she started either on the right side or the left side with each and every knot. I did not do that. I alternated mine because I liked the idea of kind of zigzagging these embellishment beads on there. So I used, I made my knots by starting on the opposite side on each one. You can do either. Um, they both come out just absolutely beautiful. Um, so that's kind of a personal choice. You can alternate your um, your starting points, or you can um, or you can just keep going with the same side. All right. So got my my little uh, second embellishment bead up there, and so now this is where I'm going to do the opposite. So I'm going to. Let's see, I have to flip my page over to get to my uh, <laughs> to get to my instructions. I got to flip this over, get those ones out of the way a little bit. I'm starting on the with the left hand. Oh, no, wait, I almost sabotaged myself. I'm starting with the right hand strands this time, and I'm going to make my little loop. Get that out of the way. Make my little loop so that my tail comes underneath. I'm going to cross. And then I'm going to bring these tails over and have to remember if I go under this, this part, the left hand pair now sits over the original loop. And then I bring the tails up and under the tails of the first loop. And then I come back and I go under and over and under. And if I did it right, our knot should start pulling right up. Remember that I want to uh, stop here and and straighten out my cord so that they're not overlapped. And also because this is where I'm going to start adding a little bead embellishment, um, I'm going to thread on one of my uh, little flower nugget spacers. Um, so if you can see here, that flower nugget spacer is threaded onto the inside cord of that, the right hand pair. So that's where I got to get it. I got to get it up into this little spot right here. So I'm just going to follow that cord around and it comes out here. Thread on the little spacer bead. And then just work it all the way, kind of weave it all the way through. 
until it's up into the spot where I want it to be. And then I can start tightening my knot down. And I'm, I'm questioning my knot. I wonder if I did it right. It's looking not quite, I think I missed a loop. Can you see that this one is not quite as it should be? All right, so let's back it out. I think my disclaimer at the beginning was right. Things, it can be a little bit, a little bit fussy, but you'll get it. So again, taking my right hand pair, oops, making a loop so that my tail goes underneath. I'm gonna bring my left hand pair down the center and bring it up and underneath the tails. And then I bring it back and I go over, over this, the right, right hand pair, under the left hand pair and over the right hand pair. Is that right? All right, we're failing somewhere guys. You're, you're gonna see me have to work this through a few times until we get it. I think I need to take that little bead off, otherwise it's gonna fall off. All right, so right hand side, bring my loop up and under. This is the tricky part. If you do the alternating, if you decide to alternate your knots, this is where it's a little bit tricky because you're doing it backwards and, um, and uh, you know, have to retrain your brain. And every time you're gonna do that and it's like, what? Your brain's like, no, why are you doing this to me? So I got my tail underneath. I'm watching my diagram, so I should be able to get it. Aha, I know where we, I was going wrong. When I cross this, the right-hand side of this pair, it needs to be up above this other, the original loop. And then I come down into the loop from underneath. Then I cross the left-hand pair, and then I go underneath again. All right, we got it that time. I got to tidy up all these cords because they got quite, quite twisted. And also, um, remember, I got that. I want to get that little, um, that little embellishment bead back in there too. So. That's one side straightened. And that's the other side straightened. And then get that little, that little bead back in there where I want it. Lynn, thank you. Um, She's saying you needed to go through the top opening. Yeah, I got that slowly. I eventually got that. And once, you, once you've done a few knots, then it becomes all much like, oh yeah, you get the hang of it, you get the rhythm, and uh, you know where to put everything. But it takes a little bit, of, little bit of work. All right, so now I'm gonna, remember at the beginning when I was tightening the knot, I said I find it really easy by pulling the cords away from me, the pairs away from each other up here where they crisscross. That is what I'm going to do, making sure that my little embellishment bead is, stays down where I want it to be, to be. And then I can just pull on these cords until my knot is nice and tight. And also, this is where, remember, we were talking about how much space to give yourself between the knots. This is where I adjust that as well. So make sure that I'm pulling, get the, getting the knot up there tight enough where I want it so that I have as little or as much space as I want. Where's that coming out? Here we 
adjusting, 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 being picky because I want my knots to look nice. And uh, I don't like the way that looks a little uneven, so I'm just pulling this the left hand tails back a little bit. And so then now I've got two knots. I'm going to add another embellishment knot. Let's see, where do I want it? I got this one. This one, this one. I want a little green one on this inside cord, on the pair, the left-hand pair on the inside cord. Slide that up and slide on another barrel bead onto all four. This knot is fiddly. It, it, you're right, Lynn, but it is totally worth the effort because the, um, the outcome, you know, I like it. Remember as you're sliding on your barrel bead to uh, make sure your your not uh, sorry your strands are all aligned. Oops, I got one twisted. Pull these ones out. And get the twist out or the overlap. There we go. All right, so, and you'll keep adjusting these knots as you go. You're going to make sure that they, um, you know, that they're shaped the way you want them. You're going to want to make sure that they're nice and tight so that, so that, um, well, depending, like we've been talking about, um, on how much space you want in between the knots, you're going to want to keep that in mind as you keep making your knots. And this is where I'm going to stop, because now you're just going to go back to that opposite, you're going to go back to the starting on the with the left hand pair and do another knot and slide your beads on. And then you're going to the next knot will be starting with the right hand pair and on down until you've done. You're only going to embellish four of the knots, the four that are in the center. That last one is going to be like the very first one, no embellishment. And so I'm going to jump to that with light, with this partial one that I did, um, that I did when, during my um, process of uh, working out the instructions. Um, this is a Josephine knot, also known as a double coin knot. <clears throat> um, I think it's more commonly known as a Josephine knot though. So now what we wanna do is, you can see that I've cut off, let's see, where's our one we were just working on. Um, I'm gonna cut off the, I have my wrong cutters here. I don't have my little pair of scissors and I don't have my pair of leather snips, but wire cutters will work. I'm cutting off the knot. And then what I'm gonna do is I should have glued this earlier. Um, I'm gonna use a gel super glue. There's a few different ones. Uh, super new glue would also be a good option, but I do kind of lean towards the gel for this. So I'm, I can use beat fix gel or I can use a, another super glue gel. And I'm gonna just put a little bit of glue right under the knot, trying not to get any all over my fingers, but you know. Um, <clears throat> what I'm aiming for is I want the, I want the edge of the knot and the tails to um, kind of adhere. And I do want my tails to be sticking as, as straight up as possible. I don't want them sticking out the side. I want them aimed straight up like that because that's gonna get tucked inside the crimp end. And in a perfect world, I would have pre-glued this so it had plenty of time to dry before we did this demo, but I forgot to do it. I meant to do it this morning. Super glue dries fast. You could also use E6000. Um, I've heard Michelle say um, that she likes the gel super glues too. So, you know, she is the very experienced with working with leather. So um, working with the gel super glue works good. I'm going to go grab a different pair of cutters. Give me just a sec. So now I've got some cutters that are a little more appropriate for what we're doing. I have some leather snips. These things are wonderful. And also just some fine little scissors will work. 
Um, so ideally you would have let these have plenty of time to dry. Um, this is one of those cases where I say, do as I say, not as I do, but I'm gonna go ahead and trim off the little um, tips. These will be, you know, nice and adhered. So you shouldn't have any trouble with your, um, you're not trying to come undone. And then I'm gonna take my cord end and these work by, um, you can you crimp them down onto whatever you're working with or you well let me let me back up you want to adjust the opening of the cord and the crimp end to fit your materials so if you have very wide materials you, you might stick a pair of pliers in there and kind of spread the jaws open to open up the jaw the plier jaws to open up the crimp end um, and or you may come in and use some flat nose pliers or something to crimp it down to adjust your materials. You can either crimp um, the ending onto whatever materials you're working with or glue them onto whatever your materials are whatever materials you're working with. If this was a seed bead design, I would adjust this to fit it just right, and then I would just use glue. I wouldn't crimp because your seed beads are glass and you don't wanna break them, right? So in that case, I would definitely just use glue. I would adjust the opening to fit the materials well, and then I would just secure it with glue. In this case, um, with the leather, it's pretty safe to say that it will hold well if I just crimp it. So I just need to tuck tuck it up in there. You could put some glue in there if you wanted. I could, and I'm going to, trim this little bit of uh, cord ends a little bit closer to the knot. And then I'm gonna tuck that up in there. And again, could use glue, but don't probably need to in this case. And then you can use a pair of pliers to crimp this down. I like to use um, flat nose pliers are great. Nylon jaw pliers are great if you really don't wanna, wanna be careful not to mar up the component. Um, parallel pliers are fabulous for this. And I think that that's what I'm gonna go with. And I like parallel pliers because the pressure comes down evenly rather than angled. So I'm just going to go in here and make sure it's all tucked up in there. Whoops, pulled it off. Start again. Get it tucked up in there. And then take my pliers and just crimp that down. And I'm going, I'm going to go all along the component. I'm going to hit both sides and the center. And that's, that's pretty tight. So again, if you felt strongly about having glue in there for extra insurance, um, definitely uh, tuck a little glue up there as well if, uh, if you feel like you need to. Perfectly fine. So that's how you attach the crimp end. I can get my little, my little makeshift macrame board out of the way. And the last thing we need to do for just imagining that this bracelet is complete, all the knots are there, you're just going to use your um, little jump rings to attach your clasp components. Which are, I know we had, oh, there they are. Say, so I know we got them, where are they? So I used in the original design, <clears throat> I used our smallest oval jump ring. Um, you could use whatever jump rings you wanted. I, at the time, was going for small because I, I chose the small jump rings and the small, um, and the small clasp just so that I wouldn't have a hugely long bracelet. I was keeping my, trying to keep my size down at that point. So that's why I chose that very small. Plus, I wanted to, I didn't want it to compete with the crimp end, so I chose a really small one. And um, at the other end, I would use two jump rings and a toggle bar. So that's it. I, I want to reassure you that if you download this, uh, it walks you through everything really nicely. So um, I might be abbreviating the project, um, 
but, but if you download it, you'll get everything you need. So I had another thought. Um, what I was wondering when I was playing with the, uh, I, when I was working, kind of working my way through how I was going to do the demonstration, I started going, what if I just ended it here? I'm going to go ahead and um, glue these ends. Small hammer tone magnetic clasp would work good, Lynn. I think that that would be a good option. I like that little um, hammer tone magnetic because it's a very kind of low profile. It um, it doesn't add a lot of length to your bracelet or your necklace or whatever it is you're making. Okay, here we go. Randy's saying, I would love to make earrings um, with two knots with turquoise and coral. Um, that's kind of where I'm going, Randy. I am going to see about turning this little idea into an earring. Let me adjust this before. Yeah, I can adjust it after. So I glued that. And you remember in the perfect world, I would set that aside and let it cure before I did anything else. But, but we're working on a time limit here. Tuck that up into my crimp end and get that secured. And then I'm actually going to take, um, I was imagining just a single knot. So I'm actually going to back this out, back the second knot out of here. And now I have to figure out what I was imagining was just leaving it like this with the original knot and the um, all right, I'm going to pull everything off except that first bead. And then I'm going to add a bead back up on this strand. And then I'm going to thread the barrel bead back on. And it's going to be an earring, and I could just trim all this cord off, but I'll do it. I'll do it at the end. Because it's obviously I'm not going to wear an earring this long. Some people might, but I probably would not. So Michelle is saying that she loves to use this uh, this knot with and make earrings. And she's asking if I remember making some when we were in Georgia, probably at the Pinners Conference, huh, Michelle? And I don't remember doing it. But if you if you say we did it, I believe you. So what what I'm going for here is I'm just going to adjust these. Get those little, got these little bead embellishments. And then I think I want to crimp down. What did I do with my parallel pliers? I really want those ones. Oh, I put them back on the rack. Um, parallel pliers are also great for adjusting the, um, for adjusting these barrel beads, for crimping the barrel beads. And I want to make sure that this is all very centered before I crimp that. I just crimped it lightly so that I could still adjust if I needed to. But I think you can see where I'm where I'm going with this. I'm going to crimp this and then I'm just going to cut and leave some tassels. And that is secure enough. And then I'm just going to trim these. And I could, I guess I could add some seed beads down at the bottom too and maybe secure them with a little knot.
could definitely be a thing to do. But as it is, I think I'm just going to kind of cut them in kind of a uneven little tails. I kind of like it. I don't know what you guys think, but this is what I was imagining this morning when I was like, hmm, what else could I do in this demo? What would be fun? I could very much see leaving these longer and adding a little seed bead color down at the bottom and then knotting it, but uh, I like this little variation. So what I'll do is I'll take a picture, I'll make a second one, and I'll take a picture and I'll add these to the, um, I'll add them to the inspiration page so that that picture will be there to remind people that uh, that is a possibility with this technique too. So that's it. That is our Josephine Knot Bracelet. Did you like, do you like that imaginative name? I could come up some, with something a little more interesting, right? But um, when I'm naming something, especially if it's a certain technique, I um, often like the idea of, of, you know, if people are looking for something, looking for Josephine Knot stuff, then this bracelet will pop up if it includes Josephine Knot in the name. So sometimes I'm practical like that. So um, anyway, there you go. I'm going to switch my camera. All right, and it looks like it's working. I'm back. So, <laughs> so that's it, you guys. Um, as usual, I am very grateful that you popped in to watch this and um, would like without crimp. Also, oh, Randy, just you mean leave the knot and, and then attach a jump ring somehow up at the top of the knot. That's an idea too, I like that. Leave long tails and add beads to them. Also a very, very good option, yeah. All right. Um, so thank you, you guys. Um, it's cold and great. Winter's, winter's here in Northern California. We thought it was going to skip us entirely, but, but we've had winter for the last few days. And um, that's okay. Summer will be here next week. And spring was in February. So whatever. <laughs> so, But we did get some rain recently. So that was really great. Um, we're happy. And um, I will get something scheduled for next week. And um, hopefully... Um, by then, Windows 11 and I will be getting along better, and we won't have any technical glitches. And I will see you guys then. Thank you, and have a wonderful week. Be well. Make lots of great stuff, and I'll see you later. Bye.